probably about six months ago, it was a few musicians, probably about five or six of us, and we got to one of the last stops, because each of the musicians get off one by one. And as we got to one of the last stops, the singer and the violinist left the carriage, and it was just me and the guitarist left. And as they left, this girl walked on with a violin case. And we just went, hey, is that a violin? She was like, yeah. I said, do you want to play with us? We've got the music here, just ready. And she went, yeah, all right. So she sat down, opened the music, she got her violin. She was only on the stop for like four or five stops, so she played a couple of songs with her, and then she left. And as, as she got out and we kind of said goodbye to her, this Irish guy at the end of the bar, just um, at the end of the bar, at the end of the, at the, end of the carriage, um, stood up and just went, this is why London is the best city in the world. play with a full orchestra at one of the top venues in London but the orchestra is made up purely by strangers that I meet on the London Underground. Best way of putting it. Uh, and we've, we've decided that I have a year to do it, so I start on the 1st of January 2012 and we're going to look at doing the show on the 12th of December 2012, 12, 12, 12. So I have almost an entire year where I have to find the musicians to form an entire orchestra just based on strangers. Um, and then perform at, at a top London venue. Uh, we're going to aim, the first one we're going to aim for is the Royal Albert Hall. So, aim, you know, because basically, well, I'm just thinking if, if they say no, and I go, oh, you know, they said no, let's go somewhere better. I can't really, can we? So why not, why not aim, aim, aim high and then just knock them down? So the idea will be, I think on the website, we'll have a list of all of the top London venues that we want to go for. And as I get rejected for each one, we put a little cross through them. So if we got the top 10 and we've been rejected from nine, we might be able to just take a screenshot of that and send it to the venue number 10 and say, please, please don't be venue number 10 with a cross. It might work. You never know, the pity vote, that's what I'm thinking. I didn't, I didn't start playing music till I was 16, 16, 17. Um, at school, I was banned from doing music and drama um, because my attendance was so poor. Basically, they're both kind of um, team sports, you know, they're team lessons, where you have to, like drama, there's no point, you've got to do plays together. Music, you have to perform with other people. And I was unreliable. So I wasn't, I didn't have the greatest attendance and they said that you're, you're below the threshold. I had like 60%, 60-70% attendance. Um, I was one of those arrogant smart kids at school who thought oh, I, can get, I can get away with only being there two thirds of the time and still do the same thing. It's um, very, very wrong. But um, yeah, so I was banned from doing music. So I had no musical lessons growing up, I couldn't couldn't read a note of music and even though I still can't it's for different reasons you know I've changed changed the reason for doing it but um yeah so school couldn't read music at all then moving into going to college I started getting I, I was always always into music but I was never into playing it and then I basically just got into band started singing um, and then moved into just learning guitar literally just picked up a chord book and just started learning all the chords and, that's how it's always gone. I've always heard things, I've always heard notes, and the ability to kind of, all I've got now is the ability to hum those notes, and this is where it's changed, I think, in the last year, since working, before working with any kind of classical musicians, I'd just be working with musicians saying, right, okay, here's a chords for a song, this is what I'm gonna sing, this is what I'm gonna play, you guys play your bit, just do whatever you want, and then it, you work and you go, yeah, that works, that doesn't work, and I'd be like, can you try something else? That doesn't work, try something else. But I wouldn't really know what. I have no idea. So I'd just be like, ah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And that was it, yeah.
Everything in the last two years has been a series of progressions. I, I stopped doing music when I moved to London, taking a break, and then I got asked by uh, the organisers at Puttyfoot, the, the Puttyfoot Photography, two really good guys, Darren and Lisa, who do loads of shows and photography. They put on this amazing show in a place called the uh, Lydiard House, which is like a listed building. Uh, amazing, amazing place. You walk in there and acoustically it just rings. It's incredible. Uh, it hasn't had music in 200 years and they've managed to convince the, the, the owners of the house to put on a show over Christmas a couple of years ago. And Lisa Coleman is like a big fan of the stuff and she just said to me, I really want you to play and I want you to come back to Swindon and I want you to do the show, but I want you to do it with a full string section uh, and we're going to get a grand piano in and I want you to do it just in the way that she had always heard the music. And to be honest, the way that I'd always heard the music but had never really pushed it. So. We did the show and it was amazing, I loved it. Uh, and off the back of that, someone in the audience came up to me and said, really, really loved it, I want to hear it again, but I want to hear it with a full band and I want to hear the string section. So for a little while, we kind of added a string section and called the band Buzzwell and Strings um, and did a few shows under that name. And then from that, added in more instruments, started adding clarinets and trumpets. Suddenly Buzzwell and Strings sounded as kind of relevant as Pink Floyd and drums. <laughs> it didn't really make sense. So, so we kind of just scrapped that and just said, okay, we'll just go with the name Buzzwell and just get it associated with just this big sounding band and just have strings and clarinets and trumpets and trombones. And then from that, we did a show in Swindon and one of the guys there worked for a charity called Kick for Life, which is a sporting charity that raises awareness and funding for children in Lesotho in Africa uh, who are at risk of HIV. So it's a really good charity and they've got a lot of sporting personalities on, in, involved in promoting and pushing the charity. So from that he said, okay, we want to do something musical with it. So he, he said, look, you've, you've obviously got to a point where you can write music for all these instruments uh, and you still can't read music, so I want you to write for an entire orchestra and perform the show, find an orchestra, write for the orchestra, and I'll find a theatre to do it in. And we picked the Wyden Theatre uh, in Swindon because when I was about 14 or 15 and I st first started getting into music, I'd always go past that place and they'd always have classical shows going on and I went, one day I'm going to play there with an orchestra. I'm going to do it. And I always promised myself I would do it and never, never took it up, never pursued it, never considered it. And it's really because of Sean coming to me and pushing me and saying, um, I should, should explain that Sean is the organiser for Kick for Life. My name's Sean. I'm not talking about myself in the third person. <laughs> yeah, Sean said to me, let's play some songs. <laughs> um, Sean Jones. Sean Jones said to me, um, like, you know, doing, it was, it was his idea of doing the orchestra thing that really got me back into doing it. And, and we did it. We performed with, with the Royal Ambassador Orchestra. We did you know, something big with them, and it just made me realise that anything is possible. The orchestra will be made up in size of at least 30, but no more than 100. So it's, we were thinking 150, but I think 100 is probably more realistic to limit it with. Um, but 30 is minimum, really, when you consider you've got like a uh, full string quartet, you'll have full woodwind and full brass. So I think all of it actually makes sense. It's going to be at least, at least 30 to, to 40 musicians. But we're not putting a limit on the number. We're just allowing anyone until we get, you know, we'll keep building it up and up and up until it works. And the idea will be that all of the people that we meet have to be strangers, they have to be people that I haven't met before, they have to be people I've not had direct contact with, uh, they also have to be people who are carrying their instruments and I have to meet them whilst I'm buzzed into the underground. So I've got to put my path, my oyster, buzz into one of the London Underground. so I've actually got to be on London Underground soil. So. challenge is that I'm going to find an orchestra based on strangers. 
if those strangers stitch me up, I do reserve the right. Yeah, but if they've, yeah, exactly. So I can go find the depths afterwards. But if they've, if they've agreed in the first place and they're part of the orchestra, I tick the box, I've done it. If they then stitch me up later, otherwise you're reliant on a hundred strangers doing this. And as much as I would love that to happen, some of those strangers, so let's be honest, I'm gonna, some of these people who I'm gonna find are gonna be idiots. Yeah, they're gonna be assholes. They're not gonna all be nice. I'm gonna think they are. They'll have fooled me in their initial meeting. And then it's too late, I've committed, they're bonded, I've agreed. So occasionally I might find someone who, who you know, is unreliable, isn't very nice, doesn't get on with people. You know, I think it's fair to reserve the judgment that if, if we f form this orchestra and we find, imagine the Royal Albert Hall agrees to do it, you've got a hundred piece orchestra, it's really brilliant, and two weeks beforehand, one of the viola players starts punching the rest in the face, I should reserve the right to be able to ban them from the show, so. There's loads of stuff that could go wrong. I'm, I could die. <laughs> that could go wrong. That's, that's, that's pretty spectacular. <laughs> that is, that's the worst case scenario. It's wrong, isn't it? Shit, it's wrong to die. It's, actually not it's wrong to die. Yeah, yeah, actually, no. Yeah. That's not worst case scenario. Would I rather do the show at the Albert Hall with the full orchestra, but have lost an arm, or not do it and play outside and shit myself? That's what I'd have to ask. I'm wondering, because I'd be able to play it outside on my own, but I wouldn't be able to do it if I've lost an arm. But I could get someone else to do it. I could get someone to strum for me. Come on stage, I'll play the chords. Strum away. <laughs> Feel like that. Strum away. I'll do it. Yeah. So I think I would rather lose... I would rather lose my right arm than not do this, is what I've basically discovered. And you're tired of making all the mistakes that are already made And your friends think that they're helping When they say uh, that it is healthy To explore and try to be oh, with someone else